The Evil Within review. Let's get started. The Evil Within is a third-person survival horror game very fashioned after RE4. The story starts with the detective and his partners responding to a call, and then their insanity begins. The game is a solid hook. It goes from 0 to 100 in seconds. I know a lot of people really do not like this game, but I personally thoroughly enjoyed it, so much that it became one of my most favorite games. In this game, the main character kind of just gets caught up in all of this, but that's just the story on the surface. If you read a lot of the optional material, it goes a lot deeper than that. I really like this game's plot. Alongside that, there's this whole other story in the DLC chapters that fleshes the behind the scenes stuff completely out. It makes things really satisfying to watch with the added clarity. The thing that I really like about The Evil Within is that there is a definite psychological aspect to it. The fact that this game has a lot of mind-bending suspense to it, I really enjoyed that aspect of this game. Also, the game has a great sense of visual storytelling. There's a lot that's cinematic about this game. Like a horror movie, hence the added grain filter. Stark lighting, creeping fog, and dilapidated interiors help showcase the striking visuals and disturbing monsters that inhabit them. It just makes you feel like you're walking through the ash of humanity. Seeing that visual storytelling is the kind of stuff you do get in the production design of this game that is terrific. Gore is really used in nearly every aspect of the game, but it never really feels out of place. The Evil Within's atmosphere varies heavily from moments of serenity and peace, whilst also presenting hellish environments that epitomize evil. It's a very delicate balance that the game repeatedly maintains. The stuff that's part of the environment is very dark and realistic and it appears throughout the game. The environments are richly detailed and immersive with a classic aesthetic evocative of Mikami's previous works. The game's unique, ever-changing and evolving state conveys a tone of fear and saturates your senses. And the lack of consistency is there to rob the player of any kind of ground in which to get used to. There's an electric feeling as you explore some of these environments and the dreamlike feeling hangs in the Air, with each new area changing the undertones from menacing to surreal. It can be a little confusing and disorientating, but that's exactly the point. You may as well appreciate the style when you can. I really like the game's lighting engine. The prominent use of high contrast and pure black shadows, it almost gives the game a noir feel, which helps elevate the sense of mystery within the game's wild plot. There's a real sense of discovery, and despite being on the run to survive, you can't help but stop to take in each surprising new location. The game's combat stands head and shoulders above everything else most of the time, with stealth leading to plenty of startling moments whether it's being suddenly caught by an enemy or inadvertently frightening moments because of the gameplay and how enemies react to you. There are plenty of moments where the tension rises to an unbearable level. The game does heavily encourage stealth, and there will be moments when you can hide, though that might probably depend on your playstyle. Hide and then stealthing around really raises the tension quite high, but even regular combat can be nerve wracking as engaging with the various enemies with limited ammunition has you checking that you don't waste any unnecessary shots. Managing resources is critical for the duration of the game. You have just enough ammo, you know, like it's not like you're scrounging for things and you you're like dying every two seconds because you're running out of bullets. If you are conservative with what you find, you'll be fine in the game. And that's one of the things I like about it because there is combat in the game. It's not just hiding. Combat is visceral and graphic. The game can be very stressful, especially in its combat scenarios, but even walking around the game's many different areas keeps things tense. The controls are easy enough to learn. The game has pitch perfect pacing. They break up the action in really nice ways, giving you these nice set pieces to walk through between action scenes. Sections focus on stealth, exploration, and frantic enemy encounters. Bizarre and disturbing creatures appear frequently, including uniquely terrifying boss encounters. The game's got a solid variety when it comes to level design, too. Every chapter seems to offer something kind of different. A couple of chapters are very open-ended. There's so many ways to approach the situation, allowing you to work around your environment to avoid or plan yourself against enemies. A couple of chapters sway away from the open-ended design, making you feel more claustrophobic by having a good blend of both of these styles of level. The game hits a great middle ground between the open-ended village areas of Resident Evil 4 and the more claustrophobic corridors of Dead Space. Weapon-wise, the gameplay really benefits. Also really cool by the this game is you upgrade yourself by returning to a peculiar hub zone. I really like the upgrade system. It lets the player focus on improving whatever weapons and abilities they use most, allowing people to really play the way they like. It feels very rewarding.
onboarding, improving your skills, and it makes exploration feel a lot more rewarding too. This game has a lot of hidden nooks and crannies. I think this is something very important in survival horror games, and The Evil Within gives the box a bold, strong check. Outside of the actual weapons, you can find additional one-off weapons, a tactic that adds another layer of strategy to the tense enemy encounters. I like these weapons a lot. It gives the game a feeling of improvisation that really helped make this game feel completely different than any other survival horror game. The variety of options ensures a thoughtful approach to combat depending on each situation. Despite so many ways to dispatch your enemies, open combat should be avoided whenever possible. Playing stealthy can vastly improve your odds of survival. You're rewarded for successfully sneaking up on most foes. I love the gameplay. The gunplay feels great, ammunition is scarce, so you're encouraged to play things carefully, you're rewarded for exploring, and there's a lot of room for experimenting and finding strategies that work for you. I really love the game's monster designs. The enemy designs were fascinating due to the way they moved or appeared, which made killing them either satisfying or harrowing. It gave me a lot of Silent Hill vibes. It's super eerie and panic-inducing. There's three DLCs which play really differently from the main game. I do really like some of the unique monsters you'll encounter in the two main story-driven ones, but the real appeal to these story DLCs is how it fleshes out the story, and it's definitely worth playing for at least that if you already like the main game. The game is attributing so many awesome horror movies and horror games that we've played before. There's even a direct reference to Silent Hill too. I really like this game's boss fights. They all feel unique in their own right and will test your endurance. There's a few scripted events that are unsettling with the game using a lot of misdirection to mess with the player, which is a constant theme, giving you this sense of urgency. And it works extremely well for the game. It's supported by a great deal of atmospheric winding drones and groans, sinister dark ambient tracks that reflect the areas that the game presents. The chase music is very inspiring and it does make the chase sequences really interesting as a result. The sound design is pretty great, especially for the combat. The sound effects are extremely well done, especially when combined with the game's excellent reverb. The guns, and especially the grenades, sound fantastic and overly powerful, and even melee weapons are very satisfying to use thanks to the way they sound. As mentioned earlier, the game has some really great reverb for spacious indoor areas, and it really helps the immersion with the music subtly playing underneath the sounds of the game. Directional audio is implemented and it's very good. And who could forget the iconic save rooms, each one complete with the soothing, sweet sound of Claire de Lune being played off a record player. Oh, hearing that in the distance is the sound of sweet, sweet relief. After all the tense confrontations, hearing this song is always reassuring. Just for this game, they added violin to it, and honestly, it sounds so good that whenever I hear just the regular piano version, I now feel like something's missing. The final thing I have to talk about is horror, and The Evil Within is a scary game. It has really creepy stuff that can unsettle you. You'll get a fun, scary, suspenseful game. When it comes to the survival shooter genre, it really hits the nail on the head. Every chapter offers something brand new without straying too far from the core gameplay. The Evil Within is a survival horror masterpiece. Anyone concerned this is just another action game soaked in blood needn't worry. Tense pacing, stunning atmosphere, and terrifying enemy encounters come together to create a journey you may never forget. I really love this game. It's one of my favorite games ever. I'm really looking forward to playing the sequel. This game's dirt cheap on all platforms now, so I guess you really have no excuse to not experience the evil within. The final verdict for the evil within is an